Hi guys and thank you so much for swinging by our little channel. Now in our self-build camper van recently we've been just cracking on with the insulation but in today's video I want to talk about a completely different topic altogether. I want to cover leaky bonded windows. Now there's so many videos out there that will show you how you should fit a bonded window to a camper van. I mean we've done one ourselves but there's not that many out there that actually cover when things go wrong so when you spring a leak now this question I find pops up quite often on Facebook or forum boards. People have fitted the windows themselves or they've had a, a company come out and do it for them or they've had windows in a long time and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they've sprung a leak and there's so, there's, there's so many people that panic about this. I mean, I, I count myself in that category, but if there's one thing that you can take away, I'm hoping that you can take away from this video, is that it's not nearly as scary or daunting a prospect, as you might think. So in this video, I'm going to cover not one, not two, but three ways that we can tackle this problem. I'm going to cover two cheap and cheerful ways that we can tackle it ourselves. And I'm also going to touch upon the third and final way, which is to get it done professionally. It's not nearly as painful or as expensive as you might imagine. I've been waiting for a day like today to make sure that everything's all watertight before I start cracking on with the interior. So let's have a look what we're dealing with. So that's the uh, window in the side loading door. You can see that's watertight. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, or if you've watched my bonded window in particular, you will know that this on the driver's side is warped. And initially, oh, I've had to put so much sealant into the top end of it to stop to make, to make it watertight. But you can see there, there's nothing coming through there now. Not a drip, not nothing. The armour at the front of the van, that's all perfectly watertight, there's nothing around the back edge, nice and sealed. And the uh, the Max fan, that's sealed too, nothing coming through there. I mean, you, can, you, can, you can hear the, the wind howling outside. If I show you the uh, solar panel, that's perfectly watertight. The brackets, or rather the uh, battens, nothing's nothing's coming around those. Nothing's coming through those. And the back doors. In fact, let's show you the the window in the rear there. See, there's nothing there as well. Perfectly watertight. But what I have noticed. <laughs> That, that window is perfectly fine. Oh, he says. Just to be completely transparent with you guys, when we first installed this window, we did have a small leak on it, and we rectified that using the exact same method which we're going to show you today. Now that's perfectly fine. That's watertight, there's nothing on there. It's going to be breath on the window. But this one here. wet. I'll just give you a closer look at what's going on here. You, you can see, see that droplet there? So that's landing on the sill, well you just saw it, you just saw a droplet fall past, landing on the sill there and ending up on the floor down there. probably worth showing you exactly why we had this issue in the first place. As you can see here, the bead of adhesive that we've applied, it's not as smooth or as even as it could be. My excuse? These were the first ones that I attempted to fit, the gun wasn't very good and I had a camera pointed at me. And as a comparison, here's someone doing the job perfectly. You can see just how smooth and even the bead is that is applied to the side of the van. This is arguably the best video that I've found fitting bonded windows on YouTube, so what I'll do is I'll drop a link down below, or just do a search for Kira vans. So 
So the very first thing that I did to sort out our leaky window was prep the area using an alcohol wipe. I then followed that up with a dry clean cloth just to make absolutely certain that there was no residue left on the van. It was then just a case of running a bead of Captain Tollies across the top edge of the window. And if we have a look on the inside of the glass, we can see where the sealants ran through the crack. It's my understanding that it could take multiple applications of the sealant to fix a leak. And as you can see right here, one application just hasn't been enough. You'll have to forgive the sound quality because as you can probably see I'm just recording this on my phone with no mic attached. But I just wanted to point this out to you guys. So that creamy white substance down there, well, <laughs> it's that Captain's Dolly stuff. Get your mind out the gutter. Yeah, it's uh, it's been over 24 hours and yesterday it was completely dry. And it's only started raining this afternoon so on the instructions it tells you that it takes a full 24 hours to cure it doesn't appear to be the case in my instance i don't know whether it's because it's we're in the middle of october now and it's the temperature is quite cool as you as you'd expect so i don't know whether that's got anything to do with it not curing properly but yeah i currently have a puddle of captain's tollies on my rear bumper. Not as bad as it was, but still not watertight. It's a new day and the sun's shining and the weather forecast for the next few days is supposed to be pretty decent, so we're gonna go for round two with these captain's tollies and hopefully we'll be able to seal this window. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, as soon as I've applied that captain's tollies to the top edge of the window, it started running on the inside of the van, so obviously what that's telling me is it's not a hairline crack, it must be must be slightly larger. I mean when I when I try and look up on the inside of the window to see if there's a, a gap showing, you can't see anything, so obviously there's a there is a gap there, but it's not a hairline, it must be slightly larger, so we're gonna have to take a different approach at trying to rectify this this leaky window. We tried shining a torch from above to see if we could see any light from the inside of the van, but we couldn't see anything, so the hole must be really small. But we decided to change tact and go with what we knew would work, so we put away the Captain Tollies and we busted out the PU40. So first things first, clean the area again, and then apply some frog tape to the top edge of the glass. I extended the frog tape just past the top edge of the glass so then using a screwdriver I could just fold the top edge of it over so it covered the glass completely. I then did exactly the same above the glass only in reverse so that I could fold the bottom lip of the frog tape just inside the recess. The plan is I'm trying to get the frog tape to sit below the top edge of the glass. So once we've applied the sealant and we're all done and dusted and the time comes to remove that frog tape and leave the paintwork behind it nice and clean, the actual bead of sealant will sit below the eye level of the top edge of the glass. And of course I'm doing all this because I don't want anybody to see the dodgy fix. With the frog tape in place, a generous bead of adhesive was applied between the gap. And then using a flat headed screwdriver wrapped in a alcohol wipe. I then tried to encourage the adhesive and coax it further down behind that pane of glass so we've got a nice bead behind there to stop the water getting through. I personally believe that in doing this you're guaranteeing yourself a nice watertight seal behind that glass because you're forcing more of the adhesive down into the space. I 
left the adhesive to cure overnight and then the following day I removed the frog tape and here's what we were left with, a watertight van. So why have I decided to use Pureflex 40 and Captain Tollies? Well, in the marine industry, they're highly regarded and you're talking about an environment where you're going to get a lot of water, aren't you? So if you can, if they can do the job in those circumstances, I'm sure that they'll cope perfectly fine in a camper van. And I went on, to, again, it always comes back to social media and forum groups. I, I go on there, I've seen lots of people that have used this stuff in the past and they've had great results with it. So there's no reason why I can't either. And the other thing is, they're cheap and cheerful. They don't cost a great deal of money. So in the grand scheme of things, you haven't really got a great deal to lose in trying them. You know, just, a few, just a few pounds out your purse or wallet. So for me, it was, it, it was, it was worth a go. Now, arguably, I haven't used these Captain Tollies as, as, as well as I sh should have done. I haven't followed the instructions to the letter, but I didn't realise that it was wider than a hairline crack. So arguably, I should have used that first, and then if I still had a leak and followed it up with that and not use quite as much tackle it exactly the same as painting the van build it up in nice thin layers but you live and learn and that's the whole point isn't it what i'll do is i'll drop links down in the description so if you want to find out more about these two products you can find that information down there now i don't think there's any arguing it is it is a bodge job it is a cheap fix but it can yield great results it can work but in an ideal world what we want to do is we want to take the van to a professional who can remove the window and reinstall it and make absolutely certain that it's it's done properly so that's what i'm going to show you now now you can see here on the opening window that the back edge of the glass it's perfectly straight against the body of the van and it's exactly the same underneath too but the front and top edge were a different story altogether and you can see the problems here that it caused i had a window that wasn't watertight we purchased all of our windows from Just Campers and when we contacted their customer services about our faulty window, they honestly could not be more helpful. I just had to provide a few photos just to show what the issue was. And they were, yep, the window's faulty. We'll refund you the cost of the window and we'll send you out a replacement. They were absolutely brilliant. So whilst I was waiting for a replacement window to be sent out, I had to make sure that this window was watertight. So it was PU40 to the rescue again. But because the window wasn't flush to the body of the van, it was a bit of a messy job and it was a bit, bit of an eyesore. But once we were done and dusted, we had a watertight van again. Now you can see here just how unsightly the window is. And I really didn't fancy the task of removing it myself. So I found up my local national windscreens and they quoted me 60 pounds to remove it. So when the new window arrived, that was where I took it. The money that they refunded me more than covered the cost of replacing the old faulty window with the new one that they supplied. I think once you factored in the cost of new window bonds, the actual tool to remove the existing window and the time that it would take for me to do it on my own, £60 paid to these guys who were experts and know exactly what they're doing was money well spent. Now I thought this was going to be a nightmare job but the guys had the old window out and the new window installed in less than 25 minutes. They were definitely worth every penny. there you have it guys that's three ways to tackle a leaky bonded window you've got two cheap and cheerful ways and you've also got the correct way now me personally i certainly won't be afraid of trying to tackle it myself using the methods that i've showed you in this video today and then if it didn't work then rather than throw more time and money at it me personally for what it costs to take it to a professional that's exactly what i do i take it to them and at least then you know the job's done correctly and you're not going to have this issue again or at least not for a long time anyway i'm going to leave it there guys but what i will say is if you've enjoyed this video or taken the smallest bit away from it then please give us a thumbs up down below and if you're interested in seeing more content like this in the very near future then please consider subscribing and on that note all that's left for me to say is until next time guys take it easy stay safe and we'll see you in the next video if you enjoyed this video then please give us a thumbs up 
And if you'd like to see more and you haven't done so already, then please consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell down below so you know exactly when we put up a new video. And until next time guys, take it easy, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next video.